What's the word, y'all? The Toronto Raps are finalizing trade to send OG Ananobi to the New York Knicks for a package including RJ Bay Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, draft compensation, Preston Tuya, Malachi Flynn are also in this deal, and that draft compensation ended up being a 2024 second round pick via the Pistons, which is basically the 31st overall pick in this year's draft. And just like that, the first trade of the NBA season is done. I thought that we would never see the day where OG Ananobi gets traded. This man has been in trade rumors for as, for as long as I can remember. And on this channel, I don't even know, it had to be six months ago or eight months ago in the offseason, I said, hey, I won't even talk about OG Ananobi as a trade piece. I won't talk about Pascal Siakam as a trade piece until they're actively dealt because I'm just tired of thinking about the rumors or the prospect of this player playing for this team when I didn't know what Masai Ujiri was thinking about doing. And now we know what his grand scheme was to get RJ Barrett back to Canada. <laughs> this is basically what it was. Now, this trade happened two hours ago. And, and, and usually, if you've been around the channel, you know I'm a guy that's on top of it. I, I get my videos out relatively fast. But this trade happened out of nowhere. It, it, it's, it's disappointing. You know, this is the one day I decided to take some time to, to myself. I woke up this morning to go to the movie theater. I went to go see The Boy and the Heron. And uh, 9 out of 10 movie, top three of the studio's production, if you ask me. And my phone started buzzing about an hour into the movie. Like, buzzing, buzzing. I'm like, oh, somebody must be calling. I look, and it's Woj and Shams going back and forth, back and forth on compensation and so on and so forth. And boom, we got the deal. And I'm sitting there watching this legendary movie. And I'm like, man, all I can think about is old John and Obi in the Knicks jersey. <laughs> Oh, man. And now this trade happened two hours ago, right? So I've been refreshing Twitter a little bit since I got home. And the general consensus on the internet, at least as of right now, without watching these, these teams play with their new adjustments, is that the Knicks gave up too much. The Toronto Raptors fleece. And personally, I don't know if I feel that way. Now, this, this might go into a, a broader discussion around some of the moves the Knicks have done over the last year and a half, two seasons. But if I'm looking at this trade at face value, I see why the Knicks would agree to this deal. And I see why the Toronto Raptors would agree. I want to tackle it from the Knicks perspective first because it seems like that's the one that everybody on Twitter is like, I can't believe they did this, whatever, whatever. The first thing is obviously you hate to lose a menu quickly, especially if you're a New York Knicks fan. You watch this man become the player that he is today where he is one of the more impactful off the bench players in all of basketball counter stats advanced stats you name it they all love emmanuel quickly the eye test loves emmanuel quickly that brother's been in trade talks for a little bit too it was very obvious that the knicks were not thinking about giving emmanuel quickly whatever bag he's worth this offseason so it's like hey why not leverage him now before we're pigeonholed to giving him a big old contract i.e. what we just did with R.J. Bear 16 months ago and trade him away for a player that we want to get into the door. Now, it is inherently a risk because O.J. Ananobi is an expiring contract, but we get him into the dough. We convince him to love the, the city of New York and love the New York Knicks. We give him an extension, so we trade Emmanuel quickly before he's worth however many millions of dollars he's going to get this offseason. And I mentioned R.J. Bear, right? 16 months ago, however long ago, um, R.J. Barrett signed a four-year, $107 million contract that goes until the 26-27 season. That is a lot of money for R.J. Barrett's production. He is an up-and-down NBA player, and when he's good, he's really good. But when he's bad, he's really bad. And we've seen times throughout the season because the New York Knicks have so much wing depth where R.J. Barrett, who's guaranteed $23 million a season, is on the bench while Dante DiVincenzo is closing out a game or Josh Hart is closing out a game. So by trading away... RJ Barrett. Again, if we go broader scale, maybe the idea of giving RJ Barrett this contract in the first place is this trade right here is trying to cover up the fact that they did that, but trading him, getting rid of that money now and getting back a player that fits perfectly to what you're trying to do offensively and defensively, I can see why the Knicks did it. Now, I am not off RJ Barrett Island. I still believe that he could blossom into a really good player. Again, we're talking about a player that's right now only 23 years old. I feel like he's been in the league forever in 2019 draft. So it's not over for RJ. The version of RJ that you got right now is not the end of him. But when you look at the Knicks and you look at their current timeline, which is uh, Jalen Brunson playing at his value and, and Julius Randle, who started off the season really slow through the first seven, eight games, getting back to all NBA form, we can't really have it be like, oh, us hitting the next level is reliant on RJ Barrett hitting the next level because you, I feel like you've told yourself that for the last couple seasons or so. So now you're bringing a guy in OG Ananobi who a lot of people will agree is one of the more impactful trade pieces that were actively on the market. Like I, I feel like people are going to watch the Knicks play now with OG and recognize that that man is one of the what three best perimeter defenders in 
all of basketball and you add that to a team that already has some guys offensively that can get their own bucket that they were kind of missing another one of those big rangy wings again he's one of the best in all of the game at that so yeah you cover up the fact you gave rj barrett all that money and you don't have to pigeonhole yourself and i'm, I'm only speaking from the perspective of the knicks i believe that menu quickly is probably going to be worth whatever money he gets in, in free agency this season but they have believed to themselves that menu quickly is not going to be worth the money that he's going to be warranted because as good as Emmanuel quickly has has been so far in his NBA career there's one spot that he has been not very good at all and that is the postseason here are his playoff numbers for the first three series of his NBA career um it's, it's a significant drop off we can specifically look at these two because 2021 what is that his rookie season or something so let's go last year's playoffs he ended up playing in, in eight of those games and you can see the percentages, you can see the numbers. Like this isn't the final version of Emmanuel Quickly, but if you're thinking from the Knicks perspective, the version of Emmanuel Quickly that can be, like, let's say an all-star or something of that caliber was probably not gonna happen in New York. You, you, the idea of having Jalen Brunson and Emmanuel Quickly be your backcourt of the now and the future, it's just tougher to win. Again, the Larry O'Brien that win where you have two guards that are really, really undersized. Like Jalen Brunson makes up for it a lot by fighting all every single game and he's got a stockier body. But at the end of the day, he is a undersized point guard and Emmanuel Quickly is also an undersized guy. So you leverage the value that is Emmanuel Quickly now before you have to pay him yourself. And then you realize that maybe our best lineups when it matter the most may not have Emmanuel Quickly in in them so do i want to pay emmanuel quickly I, I, i'm making up a number I, I never really know how to scale contracts now 25 million dollars annually if we go to the playoffs and we're closing out games and he can't be on the floor because Jalen brunson is also on the floor right so you trade those pieces away and you get back og where there's no lineup imaginable that the knicks can run where og ananobi won't be able to fit in i've seen both sides of the coin with og ananobi where sometimes people talk about him and i'm like man you're highly overrating him and i've seen times where people are highly undervaluing him so it only time will tell now playing in a bigger market in new york the new york knicks where everybody's going to get a full grasp of who og ananobi is as a player but I also can't help but look at this and think to myself, this can't be all that Leon Rose and them are thinking about doing. This kind of, and I'm just saying this, I'm not a cap expert, right? I can look at the salaries and everything, which let's do that. So I look at the salaries and you think about making that ultimate trade, the one that brings in a superstar. Because of RJ Barrett's contract being out the door, they don't really have that super salary soaker guy. Like uh, Evan Fournier is 18 million and maybe a disgruntled, Quentin Grimes is one of the young pieces that goes with this, but that's only $21 million in salary cap. So where else do you make it up? Are you getting rid of Josh Hart or Dante DiVincenzo to bring in that superstar player? I mean, they still do have all of their draft capital. They only gave up the 31st overall pick in this year's draft. I still believe there's more to be done from the Knicks' perspective. So again, we're going to watch it end up happening on the court and all, but this feels like a trade to go into another trade but again obviously there's inherent risk because oh john and Obi is on the last year of his deal so you're basically trading for him not as a rental you're trading for him as, as the, with the mindset that you're going to extend him this offseason and what that number looks like i can't even know because if i, I want to remind you that there are many teams that were interested in oh john and Obi, and that's going to have a shift off to the to the toronto raptors perspective of this deal there were a lot of teams interested in oh john and Obi last deadline um, there's been a lot of reports last deadline. I think it might have been Zach Lowe or some of the other guys that are ear to the ground when, when talking to these organizations that the Indiana Pacers and the Memphis Grizzlies both offered three first round picks and some stuff for OG Ananobi and Masai Ujiri said, no, we good. We're going to sit on this and we're going to get something else. So as a Raptors fan watching this video, you tell me, would you rather have Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett or would you rather have the draft capital stuff that was uh, introduced by the Memphis Grizzlies or the Indiana Pacers? I, I don't really know. But I am super excited to see Emmanuel Quickly in a Roll now with the Toronto Raptors that allows him to spread his wings. Not saying that he was pigeonholed because when he, when he did play with the Knicks, he was obviously a six-man of the year candidate. Last year, he was the runner-up, and this year, he's in the conversation as well. But this, the Toronto Raptors are a team that desperately needs guard production, specifically guard creation for them himself and for others around them. And Emmanuel quickly can provide that to the highest degree. But on the flip end, everything that we just talked about with the with the New York Knicks about them not wanting to pay Emmanuel quickly or getting off the contract of R.J. Barrett. That, that is now the Raptors' burden at the moment. 
they're guaranteeing RJ Barrett the money for the rest of his contract, and then you're gonna have to pay Emmanuel quickly come off season. So you got to think about it. Like, again, hypothetically, let's say Emmanuel quickly is worth twenty five million dollars annually. That's about fifty million dollars in cap that you're getting to those two players. I'm happy that they ended up making a decision uh, because Woj had talked about it two days ago on in one of his articles or something, or maybe he was on Threads replying to NBA stuff. It, either way, he was asked about what the Toronto Raptors are doing. He said, "Hell, the Toronto Raptors haven't made a decision one way or another on what they were gonna do with Pascal Siakam." And OG and now we got the trade this also tells me that they're gearing up from a Pascal Siakam trade as well which I think you just have to do at this point go completely in on on building around Scotty Barnes but it's interesting to see them go player production versus draft capital and that makes me think that the Raptors aren't thinking about a rebuild, but rather a retooling with a little bit of potential incentive, right? Yeah, Emmanuel quickly has the potential to spread his wings and hit the next step, but actively he's good at the moment. And I think that maybe the Pascal Siakam trade could do something very similar, or he did the one trade that can bring in players that can help now, and then the Pascal Siakam trade is for draft capital. But I want to remind you that Pascal is also on an expiring contract. So what is the value of a guy like Pascal? Are teams going to be willing to make a trade for multiple draft picks or multiple decent players now that have potential to be good later down the line for flight risk? And again, that is the decisions that Masai has to really come up with. What's the right deal? What's the wrong deal? But given the circumstances and given that that Toronto is one of those places that you need to get people foot in the door for a long amount of time trading for RJ Barrett I, I don't hate the idea who knows what he can be he's 20 he's 23 years old he's 23 years old at the moment and now you got him under contract for four years to really get a evaluation period to figure out is he a part of the Scotty Barnes team in the future right the Toronto Raptors notoriously is not a team that's gonna have to take all of this cap space and go get a superstar player in free agency. They're going to have to do it the good old organic way of making good trades here. They're drafting really well. And we can say that they drafted really well with the, with the Scotty Barnes pick a few years ago because he's blossoming. He just had seven three-pointers the night before. And now take a, do I want to say flyer? Because again, RJ Baird has got his average 20 points per game in his career. You know what I'm saying? Basically 20 points per game for his career. So I don't even want to say flyer because he's a good player. He's just maybe not worth the contract that he's guaranteed over the next couple seasons. One thing I'm very curious about, because um, RJ Baird is a guy that I feel like he's at his best when he's putting the ball on the floor and getting to the basket. If I remember correctly, I can't show you this for too long. I'm paying, I'm paying good money to see this, but I just want to show you that RJ Baird so far this season has played with the worst spacing in all of basketball, the Knicks just don't have positive spacing. That's one of the reasons why they traded for OG Adenobi, who's a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. They don't have that. Okay, so it's not much better in Toronto. I, I didn't think it was, but I wanted to see. So it is slightly better for RJ as far as the spacing on the court, but it's not, not by a lot. It's not like he's going from a team with zero spacing to a ton of spacing, but at least he's got that kind of... I don't know, opportunity to get to the basket a little bit more. I don't know. You know, the one thing about the Knicks, though, obviously you give up an off-the-bench super score, like a guy that could come in and, and do 15 points in a row. Like, that's the type of production you got for Manu quickly off the bench. And obviously you trade in two pieces in exchange for one. I know a lot of people are high on Preston Chuya coming back in this trade. I've watched a lot of Preston Chuya in my career. And I, I'm never going to be on the point of like giving up on an NBA player because I've seen careers completely turn around with some change of sceneries and stuff. I just want to tell Knicks fans, don't get your hopes up too high. He's going to be better than Taj Gibson playing minutes. I'll tell you that much. But with Tom Thibodeau, trust him more like he trusts Taj Gibson. <laughs> You got to remember who your coach is. And you got to remember that Todd Gibson and Thibs are like this until the day that one of them perish, you know? So uh, they ended up getting that back in the trade. And I, my homie is really how uh, Malachi Flynn, I couldn't give you a scout report one way or another, you know? So um, out of nowhere trade, I, I really do like this. I'm curious to see what the Raptors potential starting lineup looks like. I, I think that we kind of know the Knicks starting lineup for the, for the future, at least until they make that next trade, if that next trade happens. But I'm curious to what the Toronto Raptors decide to do, because I've been in love with Point Scotty so far this season. Um, and Emmanuel quickly doesn't take the ball out of his hands, any, anything, but they just need more spacing and they need guys that can create for themselves. So I wonder, do you, you put him back on the bench and say, hey, reprise your role as a six man for the rest of the season? Or do you insert him back into the starting lineup? Because they, again, they've been waiting for guard production. Uh, Dennis Schroeder has been fine this season. He's had a lot of ups and downs. I think he started off really well. Um, but now it's just like he, he does some things every once in a while. Are you okay with just giving that spot completely to quickly? Or do you start both of them when you're talking about small backcourts? I don't know. I mean, luckily on the back end, you still do have like an RJ Barrett. You still have Scott. You still have Pascal. But like there's a world where quickly comes off the bench. There's a world where it's quickly RJ, Scotty, Pascal, 
and Yaka Pertle. I'm excited to see the lineup that has quickly, and I know I know Gary Trent Jr. has been very not so great this season, but quickly, Gary Trent Jr., RJ, Scotty, and Pascal. Like I feel like they can close with that quite a bit. So they have a little bit more options, and I'm curious to see under Darko's new offense, having another guy that can catch and shoot and create for himself might help them on the offensive side of the ball because uh, OG Ananobi just wasn't that – too much. Somebody asked me on Twitter who's the best player in the trade, and I can undoubtedly say that it is uh, it is OG Ananobi is the best player in the trade. But I still believe that there's a world where I don't know two years, three years down the line, we like, damn, that Emmanuel quickly guy got traded in this deal, and now he's averaging this, and now he's consensus this in all the basketball. So I, again, I enjoyed this trade from both perspectives, where I understand what the mindset is. Uh, grades? Are we grading? There's something to be said about getting the best player in the trade. Like, historically, when you get the best player in the trade, you end up winning. And not all the times now. But, um, Knicks B-, minus, and that can definitely change with a secondary trade where this looks a lot better. Um, B-, minus B, I would go even, I'm gonna go even B for the Knicks, and maybe B+, plus for the Toronto Raptors. The 31st overall pick is something I didn't even talk about. That's, that's pretty, that's a, that's a pretty good pick. And that's, I just gave you like a podcast segment. Hey, go listen to the Kenny Beachum podcast. I will probably be talking about this more in depth. Um, I film an episode tomorrow. We've been having a lot of fun with the episodes. I'm just saying, if you like these videos, you're going to like that because though the podcast is an extension of it where I talk, you know, for 30 minutes to an hour about specific stuff. And I try to think a little bit deeper than these, these surface level videos here. There. So I'm just saying, go check it out. The link is in the description. Let me know who is the winner to trade in your personal opinion.